These shots were captured on Canon FD lenses on a Canon 600D, or T3i. There are great videos on YouTube looking at Canon FD lenses, but they're mostly for mirrorless camera systems like the Sony a7S or the Fujifilm X-T2, and most of the lens testing uh, that you see online are from mirrorless cameras, and there's a big reason for that which I'll go over later. So why make this video? What I want to see personally isn't really on YouTube, so why not I do it? So let's look over FD lenses on an EOS system, look at the pros and cons, and just, you know, overall give my experience. Before we get technical, what matters is the final image quality and the texture of the images at the end of the day, so, you know, take all this as you may. I have four FD lenses at the time of making this video. In total, I have probably paid, say, less than $300 collectively, so if that intrigues you, this might be a good video for you. A lot of people start out on APS-C Canons, uh, myself included, and a good many end up paying like $100 plus for the EF 50mm f1.8, but there are other options out there, and experimenting with vintage glass is one of them. Before going over optics, what is a Canon FD lens? Well, Japan was starting to make 35mm film cameras heavily in the 1940s, and Canon rose out of that, basically becoming Canon Inc. in like 1969. Uh, shortly after they released the Canon F1, which is my primary 35mm film camera, uh, Canon revealed the first generation of FD mount lenses at this time. FD lenses would continue to manufacture for like... 20 years, making like 134 lenses. Which brings us to the main reason you might not be interested in these lenses. Besides the last few that had autofocus, these are manual lenses. For video shooters, this isn't really an issue, but for photographers who like to take photographs of fast moving subjects, you're kind of fucked. Uh, along with the fact that these lenses don't have image stabilization. I personally buy NFDs which offer less weight because of the more high quality plastic parts instead of the full metal construction. And for me, the biggest reason, the bayonet type mount. Um, when you put on a lens these days and you know you just turn it and it clicks, that's what I'm talking about. Um, FDs that aren't NFDs don't have this. For me, that's a huge pro. So how do you put these things on your EOS camera? Well, you have to buy an adapter. They can be pretty cheap, but here comes another con. The problem is, this makes the minimum focusing distance on wider lenses extremely limited. Honestly, this bugs the shit out of me, and for me, it's a huge con. But if you're into shooting with longer lenses, like an 85mm, maybe even a 50 actually, um, this isn't really an issue. Speaking of, there are drawbacks to the added glass element. You are losing light, and you're adding more to the focal length. Let's do some math. For example, say I'm shooting my 50mm f1.4. We have to apply the APS-C focal length and the adapter to the lens. 50mm times 1.6, Canon's APS-C sensor, equals 80mm, times the adapter, which is 1.26, equals 100mm. For the aperture, f1.4 times APS-C, 1.6, times 1.26, equals f2.8, minus some light. In total, with the adapter, you are adding more focal length to the lens and losing more light.
so overall, FD lenses are great. You know, the prices are cheap. It's one of those things where it's like, do you want to buy from eBay? I personally buy from KEH Camera. Um, they're extremely conservative when it comes to their bargain condition, which can get you cheaper prices. With the post-production processing that I'm using with this video, um, I use Film Convert. I'm a, I love Film Convert. It's great. On these shots specifically at the beach here, I'm using Kodak Portra 400 at a high temperature about 7,000 plus. I like warmth in my images, so um, there's that. And I'm also using Unshirt Mask with the settings of 75, 2, and 1. It's one of those things where it's like if you're into photography and you need that autofocus, you know, you need it and you're just going to have to get a lens with it. In terms of video, you know, you're solid. You can really experiment with these and have fun with them. Um, with the shot that was just um, shown earlier, you know, there is a flaring deal going on. This is all filmed on the 35 to 105. Flaring is definitely a thing because there's not even a UV filter on it. And then it probably would have been nice to put a lens hood on it. Maybe that would have helped with flaring. This lens, like the macro um, function, you have to like push up a, a little switch. Because of the minimum focusing distance problem, it's like right where like where it clicks is like right where you want it when you're at 35 millimeters. It's rather annoying actually, but you know, it just gives you a good idea of like, you know, what you have to deal with, you know, and, and there's quirks to all lenses. If you're shooting anamorphic, you know, you're going to have to have your frame exactly the way you want it because in post-production, you're not going to be able to change it. Minimum focusing distance sucks. Um, like on the footage that I showed you earlier with the 24 millimeter, you know, I could barely focus on that railing on the patio, you know, with all the other glass, the 50, the, the zooms. I can get it in focus and whatnot. The footage is shaky, but if you just put on some warp stabilizer, like 10%, you know, stabilize only, crop it yourself, you know, you can get good results. I personally like chromatic aberration, so I like that texture in it. You can put on like an anamorphic thing in After Effects if you want to achieve that look. But this is a great bargain, and I think anyone that is interested in these lenses should check it out. So I hope you enjoy the video, and let me know um, what you'd like in the future. Thanks.